In the 19th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, we see the account of the rich young ruler coming to Jesus and asking him, what must I do to inherit eternal life? It transpires from the conversation that this man has been very faithful in keeping the law of God. He's obeyed the Ten Commandments. He's done everything he can to obey the law of Moses. But Jesus says to him, one thing you lack. He says, if you want to be perfect, verse 21, go sell what you have and give to the poor and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. In the conversation with the disciples, immediately after that, Jesus gets to the root of what this young man's problem is. He says to them, Assuredly, I say to you that it is hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. And again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were greatly astonished, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Now, if you're anything like me, I know when I pray, I'm very often coming back to that verse and saying, Lord, I thank you that with you, all things are possible. We take that as meaning for God, all things are possible. We know that God is able to do above, exceedingly beyond, abundantly beyond what we can ever ask or think. But this verse is not just saying for God. Jesus uses the expression with God, not just for God. He's saying something different than for God, all things are possible, although you can still apply it as with God, all things are possible. And I will tell you why. With God, all things are possible. You see, this rich young ruler came to Jesus with his own understanding, with his own interpretation of how things should be. He thought he'd done everything right. And then Jesus says, you need to do this. You need to give away all your goods. And the young man goes away sad because he has great wealth. Jesus says it would have been impossible for that young man on his own understanding, on, on his own way of looking at things, to accept the word that Jesus gave him. And so Jesus says, but with God, all things are possible. This is more than just for God. This is with God. This is to do with how we align ourselves with God. If you remember in the Old Testament, it tells us that Enoch walked with God and God took him. It's not just that Enoch physically walked with God. This is speaking of how Enoch lived his life. This is how Enoch's thought life worked. He walked with God. He was in alignment with God. He agreed with God on all things. This is the key to this verse. With God, all things are possible. If we want to see the miraculous happen, we need to bring our thinking in line with God's thinking. We need to agree with the word of God. We need to be united with the word of God. We need to let go of everything that is contrary to the word of God. And as Smith Wigglesworth once said, if God said it, I believe it. That settles it. In John chapter 1, we see what it says regarding Jesus. Just right at the beginning of John chapter 1, it tells us, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. This does not just mean that Jesus was in heaven with the Father and the Holy Spirit. This is more than that. When Jesus prays in the Garden of Gethsemane, he prays for believers that they may be one, Heavenly Father, even as you and I are one. We are totally in alignment. We are totally in agreement. We are totally together in everything. Jesus said, I have not come to do my will, but the will of my Father. Jesus said, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Everything about the life of Jesus was in total alignment with the Father and with the Holy Spirit. With God, 
all things are possible. The more we submit our thinking to God, the more we stop leaning on our own understanding, then the more we will see the all things are possible that God says is the case. With God, all things are possible. You know, years ago, I can remember as a little lad growing up and there used to be an advert on the TV and it was for an insurance company called the Woolwich. I don't even know if they're still going or not. But in this advert, there was like a, a, a group of trade union activists and they were calling the men on strike. They were saying, we need to stop. We're going to go to the bosses. We're going to do this. We're going to make these demands. We're gonna... Are you with me? And everybody in the crowd shouted out, no, we're with the Woolwich. It was a silly advert, but the union leader was saying, are you with me? Are you in agreement with me? Will you back me up on this? Are we together on this? You see, with God, with God, all things are possible. This is why when we turn to Mark chapter three, we see Jesus calling the 12 to himself that he might designate them apostles. This is Mark chapter three, beginning at verse 13. And it says, he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. To be with him doesn't just mean to be walking around with him, watching him, learning from him. It means to be with him, that they might come into alignment with him, that he might teach them his ways, that they might learn how to operate in alignment with the word of God, how they might operate in alignment with the king of kings, how they might operate in alignment with the Messiah, that they might be with him. And then from that, that he might send them out and to preach and to have power and to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. All of those things come from the starting point of being with Jesus, with Jesus, in alignment with Jesus, in full agreement with Jesus. When you come to the book of Acts, after Peter and John have healed the crippled man at the beautiful gate, if you turn to Acts chapter 4, they're brought on trial before the religious leaders, the, the Pharisees and the Sadducees. And in verse 13 of Acts chapter 4, it says, When they saw the boldness of Peter and John and perceived that they were uneducated and untrained men, they marveled and they realized that they had been with Jesus. And seeing the man who had been healed standing with them, they could say nothing against it. When we come into that place where we are with Jesus, where we are in alignment with Jesus, when we submit ourselves fully to God, when we say, I walk by faith and not by sight, when we refuse to allow doubt, when we refuse to allow any lies that might be told us about God, when we refuse to believe our own understanding, which is screaming at us, that's not possible, that's not possible. No, the scripture says that with God, all things are possible. I urge you today, ask God to show you any area of your life where you are not with him. If you are not with him, you're not going to see the power released into your life, into your workplace, into your family. You need to be with God, aligned with God. Come into agreement with what the word of God says, because with God, in alignment with God, when you unite yourself intellectually, emotionally, in every way with God, then with God, all things are possible. With God, all things are possible.